You're watching the Wellness Hour News that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, replacing missing teeth with dental implants. According to my first guest, he says nobody should be wearing a loose-fitting denture. We're talking about tooth replacement with dental implants. We have Kansas City's go-to implant dentist, Dr. Bill Keith. Dr. Keith, welcome to the program. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Good. Now, I know you brought some photos, so we'll get to as many of those as we can. Now, for people that don't know your practice, like who's the typical dental implant patient? Uh, our typical implant patient, we don't have a typical one, but they kind of fall into three groups. Um, the, f the first group is people that have just had trouble with their teeth for their whole lives. Okay. They've been in pain. They've, uh, they've got bleeding gums. They're, they're, they don't smile very often. And for those people, we can give them an upper lower set of fixed teeth and make them have the teeth that they always wanted to have. Our second group of people we have is uh, denture wearers, people that are already in an upper and lower denture or perhaps just an upper denture, okay. um, just a lower denture, and they're not happy with how it fits. Very, very few people are pleased with their denture. Um, and we're happy to help those people give them an upper and lower set of fixed teeth. That don't come out. That don't come out. Is this true that on the day of the procedure, they can literally walk in with no teeth and walk out with upper and lower teeth that don't come out. That's correct. Is that right? Yeah. Is that rare or is that something you can do? It's, it's a procedure that we're able to do in our office where we 3D print the new teeth for them right there while they wait um, and then they're recovering from the simple procedure that we just finished. Now, on the things we're talking about today, you have a lot of training. That's and correct. we were talking in the green room. I mean, you travel all over, all over the U.S. in some cases to learn this. Is there that much to it? This isn't a procedure that you just learn in dental school. Okay. Um, it's, it's one that takes a good amount of advanced training, one that uh, takes hours of study, both understanding the concepts and then physically doing it. So I've traveled around the country to learn, but then also I teach how to do the procedure now as well. And we're talking about replacing missing teeth with dental implants. Are there a lot of people like wearing dentures, headed for dentures where you are in, in Kansas City? In the Kansas City area, Kansas and Missouri, you know, we could have as many as 50, 60,000 people, probably more than that, that are currently wearing dentures. And then really? Hundreds of thousands of people that, that are headed for dentures or, or will be there eventually. So if there's that many people either headed to a denture or wearing a denture, why aren't they all doing this? Why aren't they coming in to get a thick set of teeth, a full arch of teeth that don't come out? What's your take? So our current denture wearers, they're, they're out of the dental system. Okay. They, they've got their dentures, they're not happy with them, but they're not going to the dentist regularly to, to even find out that this is an option. So okay. we're here to explain to them that, that it likely is an option and something that, that we can do for them and get them that set of fixed teeth. So if you're wearing a denture, you've been in the dental system for years. Okay. You grew up as a child, maybe didn't go to the dentist as often as you should have as a kid. You started having pain, you started losing teeth. You hate going to the dentist. The last place that you wanna be is seeing me. Do you still hear that by the way? Like no Every offense? Every day. No oh, offense, really? Doc, but this is the last place I want to be. Okay. No. And I understand that because their experience has always been terrible, but they don't know that we now are able to provide fixed full set of teeth that don't come in and out okay. and with very minimal pain and get them to a place where they're able to eat apples again. So how old can you be to do this? There, we can do this up till any age. I mean, you've still got a lot of life to live. What's we've, your oldest patient? We've done somebody with this procedure in their 80s. Um, and I've got Why colleagues- Why do they want to do this? Because people in their 80s like to eat. What else okay, are you going to do? Good point. Okay. You want to go on vacation. You want to eat the good food. When you have a denture, you can't taste that food. You're not able to explore when you're at Greece that delicious food that you're eating. You're not enjoying it because you can't really get the full flavor. Because the palate, the palate is, is covered. Is covered. Okay. And also, our denture wearers, the folks that out there have them, know a lot of times they get pizza burns on the roof of their mouth because you eat hot soup. It gets stuck behind your denture and you can't get it out fast enough. Oh, I see. Okay. So back to your point about why aren't, isn't everybody doing this? Um, a lot of people think they're too old. They're not too old. Um, so when you hear a 70 year old say they're young, really we still okay. got, I mean, we got 30, 40 years of life to live here. Yeah. Um, and that's a lot of meals to enjoy. A lot of smiling that they need to be doing. Is this the future of dentistry, whether it's 30 years, 60 years, dentures as we know them today and i know you make it's, some dentures we but, make dentures but dentures as we know them today will all be attached to something i sure hope Do you believe so that? i sure hope so i i call a denture a disability okay um you get about 20 percent of your chewing function that you're used to they look pretty good a lot of people think that the procedure is uh too expensive they can't afford a full set of teeth held in by implants yeah and that's just simply not true we're able to finance this people are uh, financing it they're able to finance it people ask us too so Medicare, correct me if I'm wrong here, Medicare doesn't really cover this, Medicaid doesn't, even the best dental insurance covers a small part. 
So for, for, this is common to finance. This is a, almost everybody finances it. Really? Um, You're not carrying this. So you have to have no, a decent, there's, uh, okay credit to get correct. this done. Correct. Okay. Well, affordability is no longer excuse an excuse for this. We're able to get the price down um, and finance it out as long as 10 years sometimes okay. to get it to a point that they're able to afford it within their budget. Now, uh, we should mention your practice for a moment. And people need to know, look, I'm not trying to side with you. I'm just asking the questions. Right. But at the way this is done across the United States is you go, correct again, correct me if I'm wrong, you go to one doctor that does the surgery. Maybe then you go to an imaging center. You have another doctor that puts the teeth on top and sometimes cleaned elsewhere. You do it all right there. Is that why you're able to do it so quickly? Honestly, we used to do it that way, Randy. Okay. We, you know, before we were capable of doing it all in our office, that's how we had to do it. And our greatest complaint was not the end result that the patients were getting, but that the entire process was just too arduous. They okay. couldn't, you know, they didn't want to go from one place to another. They wanted to go where they were comfortable and they'd already been. And that's why we chose to bring it all in house and, and get them something quickly and efficiently that, that we were able to do all for them in our office. So is this right? I mean, you actually make the teeth right there. You have like digital printers, you have mills, yeah, like an in-house lab that makes it right there. Correct. So we digitally design their new smile after the surgery is done and 3D print the set of temporary teeth that they leave with. You know, a lot of my friends and are still sending it out to an oral surgeon, sending it out to a periodontist, and we've got great folks in our area, but it's still difficult to go from place to place to place. So doing it all in our office, just in one spot in one day, makes it so that our patients just have a seamless transition um, and they go where they're comfortable. Let me ask you this, because we're talking about getting a brand new upper and lower set of uh -huh. teeth and you could be up in your 80s. But if you've been wearing a denture like 10 years, is it true you don't have enough bone to do this? In most cases, that's not true. And a lot of people have been told that. Um, but the way in which we're able to place the implants very strategically and angled, I won't go into too much nerdy detail about that, okay. but okay. Um, we're able to place them very strategically that for the vast majority of people that have been told there's no options, we've got options. Okay. So it comes down to training of the dentist or the technology of the dentist? It, it's, it's, we're talking about a completely different way of doing it. Um, that allows us to place the implants so that we can avoid things like the sinus. They may have heard, oh, your sinus is in the way we avoid the sinus altogether. Um, if grafting's okay. necessary, we can take care of grafting. Um, so it's, it's, I would encourage anybody that feels like they've been told they can't do this to revisit it because technology has changed and the way in which we do the procedures changed. What about pain? So a lot of people are nervous about pain. They think that this is gonna be a painful procedure. Um, first of all, you're numbed up, so you're not gonna feel anything no matter what we do. Okay, okay. Um, secondly, in our office, we, we do IDV sedation, which is where Patient is breathing on their own. They're comfortable, but they're probably on a beach somewhere okay. um, and, and not even realizing what's going on during the procedure. Um, and a lot of times they don't even remember the whole thing. Uh, there's a lot of places where they do this with just nitrous oxide or uh, a, a pill. And it's our opinion that that's just not enough. I mean, you used to probably do it that way. Yeah, we have. And, and especially- You can't go back now? No, absolutely not. For the, for the patient's sake, it, it makes it just much more comfortable. So they have very little memory of, of what's happening. They, now, what about aftercare? You said some patients just take over-the-counter stuff. Yeah, a lot of times, um, one of our patients just last week, um, Tylenol and Advil is all he needed. Um, and he was able to, he said he actually had less pain after the procedure than he had before the procedure. Really? Yeah. The, the patients like to brag, like, it didn't hurt at all. Kind oh, yeah. Of thing. Oh, yeah. And they're surprised. Um, and, and that's what a lot of people are, are surprised that, that it, really doesn't hurt that bad and Good. they're sore but it's it's manageable it's manageable the um you brought some photos what uh -huh. are we looking at here so a patient came in very insecure about her smile felt like she wasn't even able to get a job um she's a dog groomer okay um and had rotted teeth painful teeth um she told us that she was basically surviving on uh milkshakes and wow. and, and wanted to change her life so um, we started her on, on a cosmetic denture right. that, that has, she now has a job, she's got confidence, um, and she's out of pain. My goal with her in the future is to get her to place a few implants in there and get those teeth so that they don't come out. What do they like more, the way it looks or the foods that they could eat with their new teeth? You know, I really get both camps of people. A lot of folks will come in and, and really all they want is to get out of pain. And they want to be able to eat the steak again. They want to be able to, to chew on a Caesar salad. Um, 
good old Kansas City barbecue is not easy to eat if you've got bad teeth. Okay. Okay. Um, so for those folks, what ends up happening usually about six months down the line, they've gotten a bunch of compliments from their friends. On their teeth. They're smiling more. They're, they, they feel younger. And they come back to me and say, I did this so I could be able to eat these foods. But now I'm almost happier with how they look. Okay, good. <laughs> and then I've got the other group of people that come in and they say, I hate how I look. I want you to fix that. Just do six in the front. Well, I'm a dentist, right? Okay. Like it's my job to make sure that, that your teeth not only look good, but that you've got function and you're able to eat. And what we do for those people is the exact same thing, but they come back to me six months later and they say, I forgot what it was like to eat a steak. Nice. I forgot this. And they're thrilled about their smile and everything as well. But it's the merger of both of those two things that, that really happens for every single patient. It's amazing when we give people their smile back, how they also their confidence just comes back like out of nowhere. They didn't even know it was gone. You say they act differently when they come in, like oh, for cleanings and things like that. It's like they stand an inch taller. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they, you know, you can see them just, just walk in with, with a, a level of confidence. They walk off the elevator and, and it's, hello, how are you? Instead of perhaps being a little bit reserved before. And it's not just because I'm a dentist that I feel like the smile is important. Statistically, when people talk about attractiveness, the smile is always one or two. What people remember about their loved ones, it's usually one or two. There's yeah. a picture floating around Facebook that maybe you've seen where somebody's missing an eyebrow and nobody notices it because they were missing a front tooth. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, and it's unreal. I didn't even notice it at first as a dentist. You see the tooth and that's what mat matters to, to most people. Perfect example of why a smile is so important is we had a young lady come in um, missing several front teeth and she had been told by three different places that they would not hire her. Okay. Never said it was the smile, of course, but she felt like that was the case. We gave her um, new teeth and she got a job at the very next interview that she went to. No other changes other than her smile. So was it the teeth or her confidence probably? I believe it attractive. was both. I think it's both. Okay. Um, you know, I've had this problem too. I've got two front teeth of mine that, that are crowns because I broke them as a kid. Okay. Every now and then I break one and I find myself not smiling. I find okay. myself avoiding going into public. It's, you know, it changes who you are as a person when you're not proud of your smile. And it doesn't have to be a massive transformation every time. Sometimes we'll just contour a canine or fix a small gap in front of somebody's teeth. If it bothers them, then we're here to fix it for them. Um, and, and if there's something that you don't like about yourself, get out there and fix it. That's a great point. And, uh, and they, you can do it very quickly. I mean, how many, I mean, look, if everything works out perfectly, somebody literally with no teeth, right. like three or four appointments could get their new set of teeth. I can do it in two. Is that right? They can come in, we can have a records appointment. Typically we go three. So we have an extra time to have a long conversation about what they want their new smile to look like go over everything, but if we have to move quickly for some reason, we can do it in two appointments. Yeah, but what if you have like bad gums, gum disease? Can you do this? Oh, absolutely. These are the people that we're treating every day. Okay, okay. When we remove the teeth, the gum disease goes away. So we have one patient, loved to play Santa Claus every year. Okay. And he thought about not doing that anymore because he had such bad gum infection. He had bacteria all in his mouth. Um, and it smells like it, has it, an it, odor to it? It's just a horrible smell. Sound, smells like sulfur. Okay. okay. And, and he wasn't going to do this anymore. And he came in and we were able to remove that infection, get him his new set of teeth, and he's happily back to being Santa Claus again. He's back Santa Claus. Back to Santa Claus. So are, are there a lot of people like that, that that this have really bad gums and they think they can't do this? That's the most common reason that I hear that I can't do this is, well, I have gum disease. The implants will fall out just like my teeth. Is this one of those things where they kind of do it together, like partners, uh, husband and wife gets it done? Well, you know, usually the, the wife will be the person that will finally come in and, and take care of it while okay. the husband's stubbornly sitting at home. But um, soon after, they'll realize how great her teeth are and how wonderful her new smile is and that she's eating all the things that she wants to eat. She's biting into the apples, eating the corn on the cob, and the husband will come in later and decide, okay, I'll do it. Yeah, so I mean, because if you're going to retire, I guess you want to taste the food. Right. It, I mean, do these really, like people with bad teeth, do they really have a tough time eating? Oh. Is it the pain or they feel like their teeth are going to come out? A lot of times people will literally be scared that if they eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich that their front tooth's going to come out. So they'll avoid eating. They tell you this? Yes. So okay. many times I hear stories of, Doc, I haven't eaten a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or a banana even 
because I'm afraid that my teeth are going to come out. And you know, when you're starting to not eat bananas because you're afraid your tooth is going to come out, we're at a point we got to do something. It gets, it gets that bad. It gets that bad. So the patients are IV sedated. They're comfortable during the procedure. Um, and most of the time when they come back to us the next day, they're saying, why didn't I do this sooner? Why did I wait so, so long? So they have regrets. Regrets every time. Because especially men, right? We put things off to the last second until we're in so much pain, we got to call the dentist. Right. They, they, they wait until they're absolutely miserable, completely disabled in their mouth, unable to eat, unable to chew, avoiding family functions because they're not happy with how things look or how things smell, or they're embarrassed that a tooth might fall out in the middle of family dinner. If they've got dentures, they're afraid that... Um, I have one gentleman that's a, a preacher and he was about to get a set of dentures and he realized that as he's preaching, he's afraid his teeth are going to fly across the room. We can't have that. So that's okay. why we're giving him a set that are going to be fixed in place so he doesn't have to worry about that. So this is, this is the new modern dentistry. This is modern dentistry. Are you doing it at the highest level? I mean, because you have printers, you have mills. I mean, you're making it all right there. We try to be as on the cutting edge as we can, but we don't want to be so far out there that we're testing things. So Okay, okay. So, we're right on the front of everything that's been proven to work. Do some of the patients say, doctor, you've changed my life? And you know, we hear that every day and it's flattering to hear that. They say it? But oh, of course. But at the end of the day, it's not me that changed anything. I'm just the person that was able to provide them what they sought out. Okay. So they come to me and they made the decision that they're not gonna put up with this pain anymore. That's good. They're not gonna put up with not going to family functions, to not traveling, to not enjoying the foods. They've decided that they're going to make the change. So, you know, I am honored when they say that to me, but it's really the patient that's made the decision. That's good. Now, I know a couple of denture wearers. They never complain. Are you saying there's no such thing as a happy person wearing a denture? Have you worn a denture, Randy? No. Okay. They're okay. terrible. So even the top one that everybody says is this great. Well, there's suction, right? Oh, yeah, there's suction. And to get that suction, the entire roof of your mouth is covered. Okay. So when I cover the roof of your mouth, I'm covering up your ability to taste different foods. I'm covering up your ability to feel the temperature of the food. So if somebody's watching this, they have the really bad teeth, right? That you can't save, maybe they have to be removed or the denture wear. So next week they could have upper and lower teeth. I mean, of course you'd have to have openings in your schedule. Yeah, if we've got openings, like we can move that fast. Yeah, the, we have to have an, an appointment where we gather some records. I've got to spend a good amount of time planning out everything to make sure that we're strategic about how the procedure goes and where the implants are placed. But somebody could easily change their entire outlook. Next week. Just next week. Okay, so we'll go to some more of the photos. You know, this is, this is really a cool story. So this young lady came to us. Um, she'd been in pain for years. Um, she'd lost a good number of her teeth, had some left. She felt like when she came to us, her only option was a traditional denture that would come in and out. Okay. And she goes, I do not want this to sit on my bedside at night. And I said, well, we can solve this problem with implants. Okay. And so it's, it's unreal when you, when you see her before and after. Wow. And Randy, not only does she look younger, but would you say she looks more attractive? Yes. Yeah. That's true with every time we do this procedure. As we've talked about, the smile is so important when it comes Makes to- Makes you look better. Somebody's attractiveness and how others perceive them. That's, this is the kind of result that we see every day. And Randy, would you say that she, she looks more educated now? Yeah, I guess that's a person. You know, when I talk to a dentist like you, you know, I always feel like you're exaggerating what it does, but I think anybody looking at this, it, yeah, she looks And different. I understand why you might feel that way, but once you see this and you see the change and the transformation in these people, you can't deny it. The, the, we, would you look at her smile there, how it perfectly shapes with her lower lip? That's, yeah. that's what studies have been done over and over again on what do we find is attractive. And it's that upper smile following the lower lip line. And that's what we designed. So that's for by design. That's by design. All on a computer? All on a Most, computer. Mostly? Okay. 100% on a computer. Um, we shape them to fit each individual's face. You can even bring in a picture and say, hey, I want teeth like this. I can't make you look like a supermodel. But I can make your teeth look like supermodel teeth. Okay, good, good, good. Time for another one. All right. This gentleman, this is really a great story. He, uh, he came to us. Um, and it's kind of the same as we've talked about where he'd been in pain for a long time. This guy owns a fried fish restaurant in Kansas City, Kansas, and was unable to eat his own food sometimes because his teeth hurt so bad. 
He'd put off for decades to get this taken care of. His brother is actually a denture fabricator that, okay. that we use in our office and helps make dentures. And he'd said, I do not want to have dentures. So we worked with him to give him this brand new smile. And again, you can see on the, the just the confidence level. So the, these are upper and lower new teeth supported by implants. Upper and lower new teeth supported by implants. Um, and what's crazy is the after picture that you see here is actually the day after surgery. We're going to replace those teeth with a permanent set in six months, but that's the day after surgery where he looked at that. But those good. don't come in and out right there? They do not come in and out. Is he glad he didn't take his brother's advice, I guess, to get a denture? Well, his brother's the one that brought him to us and said, hey, man, I don't even want you to have a denture. The guy that makes dentures didn't want a denture for his own brother. And so he can eat whatever he wants now. He, he can eat his own seafood. Once he's fully healed from the procedure, which takes some time, but he can eat his own seafood. He ate that right away. He can eat steak. He can bite into apples. He can have corn. How soon of the can you eat after this? You can eat right away. We do ask you to take it easy. Okay. Um, the implants have to integrate into your bones, so that takes time. What and about nuts, like, like, uh, like almonds? Once we give you the go-ahead, you can eat almonds. You can eat nuts. What about biting a carrot with your front teeth? Or do you have to stay away from that? You can go right, and they don't have to be cooked. You can do a okay. raw carrot. Right they, out of the ground. What about salads? They say that denture words have a very, or people that's one of the biggest complaints I get is that, you know, like a Caesar salad is very difficult to eat because that grinding, gnawing motion is impossible with a denture. You can eat anything you want. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. We come back. More about the process. You're watching the Wellness Hour News that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. We'll be right back. Well, I'm here at Dr. Keith's office and I am uh, starting a process from my old teeth to my new teeth and I'm glad I did this because in the years I've had this and this and this, and this done and never had always gone downhill. So Dr. Keith talked me to get implants and I'm glad I did it. And it was a, it's been a process but it's a good process for me. Another thing is that uh, my smile, I can smile now, I don't have crooked teeth anymore and I can eat what I want. And, it's just been a joy ride for me. <laughs> That's just a temporary. Mm, mm, mm. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. Good job, everybody. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That's incredible. Thank you. Man, that's perfect. That's she looks great. Cool. Yes, Are you yeah. You're watching the Wellness Hour News that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic. Tooth replacement with dental implants. According to my first guest, he says nobody should be wearing a loose-fitting denture. With us, we have Kansas City's uh, go-to implant dentist, Dr. Bill Keith. Now, um, so if somebody goes to you, there are the two categories. They have really bad teeth and gums right now and can't save the teeth. They have to be removed. Right. Or the denture wear. What are the options in your practice as far as dental implants? So we're, you know, for both groups of people, it's really the same grouping of options. We have a traditional denture, which our denture wearers will already know is not a good option. Okay. Um, it's very difficult to chew. Things can want to come out. Um, so we always try to encourage somebody to go towards implants because it, it, okay. it gives us something to fix the teeth onto. All right. Um, the, the most basic option that we have is where we just take a couple implants, we put them on the bottom, um, and on the bottom, your teeth rock around a lot because we don't have that suction. So like it's like a on the snap top. in, snap out. It snaps in, snaps out, um, but they still rest on the your gum tissue there. So these folks get a lot of sore spots because they okay. move a lot. Um, they find that they can chew better than if they didn't have the implants, but it's still not an ideal solution. It's it's our it's one step better um, than a regular denture. Than a regular denture, but it's okay. not where most people find themselves really happy. Um, the, the final step that we have is where we take four to six implants on each top and bottom and we fix those teeth in place. They are screwed in place. I can take them out of my office if we need to for some reason, but they never come out at the patient's home. They're able to eat the foods that they want. They're able to... And then the, the upper though, the same upper. kind of thing, the palate is removed. The palate's removed. Okay. There's nothing on the palate. They, uh, so they're able to, to eat those foods and, and feel them. They don't have that annoying thing up there. For some people, um, maybe they are a gagger. It's hard. A lot of times when people get a denture, they, they find oh, that it makes yeah. them want to gag. Um, we don't have that problem with this. 
and they could just eat whatever. Do they ever call you and say, Doc, are you sure I'm ready to start eating some pretty chewy things? That's usually one of the things is they, they get nervous when I say, you know, you can go ahead and, and eat any food that you want. I'll ask them not to do things like chew on ice, but we're not supposed to do that with our natural teeth either. Okay. Um, but they can eat anything that they want and, and they're shocked by this. You know, they'll say, okay, you say anything, but can I eat nuts? And I said, I said anything. I mean, one of the things that is so incredible, I mean, we're in Kansas City. We have the best barbecue in the world. Okay. And I had a patient come back in and he goes, Doc, I didn't even know that I could eat ribs off the bone again. He'd been to Oklahoma Joe's barbecue and he was just gnawing the ribs. And he goes, I thought <laughs> I'd have to eat those with knife and fork for the rest of my life. But there I was. And he goes, I, I ate the whole slab. So what about maintenance? I want to ask you about that. Uh, is it just they come in for checkups and cleanings just like regular teeth? Just like regular teeth. They come in. Um, we have them see the hygienist and the doctor take x-rays, make sure that everything's healthy. We clean under the gums just like we do with regular teeth. Um, and just make sure that they're maintaining the teeth uh, as best as possible, keep them healthy. Do they ever say like, this is better than my original teeth? All the time. Is that uh, right? You know, one of the greatest advantages of these teeth is they don't get cavities. Okay. So, you know, your natural teeth are susceptible to cavities. These, they don't get cavities. You just have to take care of them like, like you You have to take care of the gums and the tissue around them. Uh, basic things like brushing your teeth and using a water pick, which all of our patients can handle. Okay. Um, keep really keeps things healthy. We're out of time. So final message to the two groups of patients you're talking about. They have really, really bad teeth and they know they don't want a denture or the current denture wears. They've heard what you have to say, but they're still skeptical. What do you say to them? I understand being skeptical. I mean, half of us are in the show me state, but okay. just come in and, and sit down with us for a free consultation and let us kind of show you what we're able to do and see if you'd be a good candidate for this. All right, no more dentures. Do you think you can wipe them out in your state? I sure hope so. I sure hope so. I mean, if they all figured it out how good it is, because you said there's like over 100,000 people, there's not even enough dentists to service them. No, no. And, you know, I've delivered a lot of dentures, and that's why we do so much of this now, is I'm never happy on that day that I'm delivering dentures, because I know what I'm giving that person. They you don't know even, they're not happy. They don't even know that they're not happy yet, but I know they're not going to be happy. Okay. And that doesn't make you feel good. Do you ever get excited, like somebody's telling you their hard luck story? I think we've talked about this, where you see the end result, where, where, where you look at them and in your mind you're saying, they have no idea how good they, this is going to be. They really don't. And, and that's always, we try to explain it as best we can in our consultation, but when you come in and you finally have gone through that transformation, they're always wowed by how, you know, this, what they perceived as a little change makes such a difference for their whole outlook on life. Okay, good. Well, Dr. Keith, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. And by the way, do they go to your website, make an appointment? Do they call your office, they, make an appointment? Whatever's easiest for them. You can go to our website. You can uh, call the number. Either okay. way, uh, we've got folks that will be happy to help you out. Okay, good. Thanks again. You've been watching the Wellness Hour News that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. For now, I wish you good health. Thanks for watching the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.